Okay, good morning, everybody. We are continuing on in our study of Daph. We are in Daph, the bottom of Daph, study Daph of Abet. Uh, we have been discussing the cases of when we have um, um, gaps in the size of our walls. And the question is, at what point are these gaps going to create a problem for us um, in terms of making an error of using an individual location or not? So, Mahada, so the last slide of, of now we're talking about the question of like how can you allow cer certain uh, places with with, with certain structures. So we said that if you have a, you know, let me share that so we can see. Okay, so we had a Kora, right? So again, we have a we have an abandoned structure right here, right? So again, um, some sort of ruined ru ru area. It still has walls, but nobody's currently living in it, and. Yeah, so the question is, so how would you be able to, you know, consider it to be a Shudiyachad again, as opposed to it being something else? So the answer is you put a cross view on top, and then as long as it's, you know, four Tfachim wide, then you're good. So, so the question then, so now we're going to discuss what that means. So, so the question is, so, so we allow... The cross beam that's four that's four tefachim wide for the for for the for the root for the ruin, but do we allow it for water? So who so who's the one who would allow that? So So this is what so the fact that you would allow it for that is how we get to the point. There's no argument about that, right? That the esser for divrekel, right? So so if we if you would if it would work for uh, the Khorba and for water. So seemingly also, again, at a gap of less than 10 amot, it's considered to be a full breach. And that's why all you need is this minimal Khorba to fix it. So rather, what are they really arguing about? They're arguing about whether, if they're saying if it's 10 or more, right, that whole argument, that's just within the opinion you know, of Rav, but everywhere, everybody else seemingly has agreed already. That if it's less than 10, it's perfectly fine, and all you need is a left here core to fix it. So now we're gonna try and line up our machloka between Rob and Shmuel about you know it being 10 or, or greater than 10. Um, right, meaning exactly 10 or not exactly 10. That's our, that's our question, you know, which way are we going? So, so now we're gonna try and line up their machloka with another machloka. So Lema Bae the Rabba Bapluka the Rabu Shmuel so we're going to say that we're going to compare the two cases of Rav and Shmuel to Abai and Rava. So now what are the opinions of, of, of Abai and Rava? So that's that we have from this statement over, over here. Ditmar. Sikas al-gabe achsadra, shigesh lafasimin shera. So if you made a schach on top of a um, the, the nice portico that has these simin, which means these, these edges that jut out, Right here, this is so it's here. So actually, so this semen is different than we had before. So according to Rashi, this semen is um, referring to the fact that we have loved walls on the sides of it. Okay, Abaye Amar Shera, Rava Amar Psula. So, Right, so in that, in that scenario, so Baye says this is a valid, this is a valid sukkah because again it has three walls. Whereas Rav would say this is not because it's there. If there's since there's no um, again because this thing technically has no actual entryways or any actual doorposts. It's just a set uh, a series of of love of love of wall of lo of love sticks. So the question is, does that work or not? So I'm not looking to buy and Rav that to work. Okay, again this diagram right here. So now the question is why would it be good to record each opinion? So by Amar Chera, Amar Pitiker Yord Visote. So the reason why for Baye it works, I guess, okay, so this is assuming there, that there wasn't that there, that we don't count the sidewalls. Okay, so the reason why it's kosher according to Baye is because we say that the roof comes down and makes a wall from the roof. Rava Amar Psula, Lo Amar Lo Amar Pitiker Yord Visote. But Rava, so that means it wouldn't be necessarily like, like this photo, that, that diagram it will be more like, one second. A couple days ago. Sorry, while I scroll on up, try not to get too dizzy. 
here. It's more like this case. Right? So this is, again, we mentioned this, this was uh, two days ago. Right, so that would be, right, so this is our semen is, is the little entryway here. Right, and that's the question. Is this sufficient or not? Is this considered, like, that's, and that's the question. And I'll go back to, okay, I'm going to go back down to where we are. Okay. Again, my flow code has, again, within Rashi, which in different cases goes differently. So, but at this point, I'm P. Tikra, it's definitely a case where, where, the, where we're talking about there not being any walls on the side. If not, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be much of a discussion. Okay. So, 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 so pretend those, say those little lines there are just streamers to make it look pretty, not they're actually serving any halachic purpose. Okay, so, so Lema Abaye Karav, Rava Kishmoros. So now that we've established that Rava says that, the, that, that Ab, sorry, Ab, Rava says no good because we don't say Pitikri or Vesote, whereas Abaye says it's good because you do say that you count the edge of the roof as coming straight on down, right? The edge, edge of the cross, we go straight down, that's the wall. So, so now we're trying to line up um, Abayas like Rob and Rob is like Shmuel. So I'll try and um, explain this, how this works. So a little bit of Shmuel, right? So according to Shmuel, everybody would agree that this, this stuff is no good because you don't have, because you don't really have walls. Keep Ligi a little bit Rob. Rob is the question in regards to what, uh, what, at what point are these walls considered to work? So, um, so Varava, so Rav was in Rav's opinion. Ad kama kama Ravatam, ella dehani mechito lachsad Ravidi. Aval hacha dehani mechito lav lasuk Ravidi lo. So the answer is it comes down to at what point the we built the walls and for what purpose. So according to Rava, so in our case of the Asadra, um, right, where Rav said it didn't work in the other case in the Bika, that was relating to um, where the walls weren't made for the use for, for use for the uh, for the specific use of the asad of the portico, but as in here, since walls were made for that purpose, it would work. But here, when the walls aren't made for um, the, the purpose of sukkah. So therefore, they, we won't let it. We won't let it count. Rabbi Yossi Omer im mutarin. So, so then Abai, then Rabbi Yossi says, if they're able to. So now, now we're okay. Sorry, look, that's the next thing. Let's, let's just sum up this this little bit over here. So again, so this is the question of. Were these walls intended for use directly for the sukkah? Like, are they are they are they considered to be part of it, or are they simply? Well, there happens to be walls surrounding it, like the case of the bika, right? Where you happen to built your uh, portico in in a valley. So I guess you could technically count the valley walls, but the walls aren't really part of the structure, and that's the question: Does that count or not count? Rabbiosi Omer in Mutarin. Right, so this is a real thing for the Mishnah saying that if they're good for the, if they're good for this job, is they're always good, right? As in, right, so in, you, we can't say that it's good now, but it's not good in the future. That's not an option. Either it's always good or it's always bad. There's none of this, you know, it fell down, but for now we'll let it slide. It's like, no, if it's going to be a problem next week, then as of right now, it should be us or two. So, Ivaihu, Rabbi Lazar, Lazar, or Lahatir. So the question is, was so let's let's try and figure out. Did Rabbi Yossi say that even that Shabbos is really usher, or is he just you know making some very turban and that will get confused type of thing? So you have to like recover out what is Rabbi Yossi's exact opinion that it always has to be a kakasha or always possible. So what does that mean? Is, he to be, is that to make our lives easier or harder? So I'm Rav Sheshit's last star. Rav Sheshit says it's to forbid it that even right now it's no good. And Rabbi Yossi says the exact same thing that he's saying that it always has to be kasher. If it's not always kasher, that it's no good. So, I am not me happy. I've got a bride to support this. Amar Biosi, Kishem Shasur Lati Lavo, Kacha Sur Lato Shabbat. So, we've Biosi quoted in a brighter um, that he says the exact same thing that just like it's no good now because the walls fell down, therefore, it's no good moving forward either. Itmar, Rukhib Yosef, Halacha Kerb Yosi, Shmuel Amar, Halacha Kerb Yehuda. 
So now we have another statement that Rabbi Chia Bar Yosef says, we follow Rabbi Yosef, that it always has to be good. Shmuel says, Halakha is like Rabbi Yehuda, in which case, if it's, in, if it's good, if it was good when you entered Shabbos, it's still good now, even if the walls fell down, we don't care. So now we're going to ask, Umi Amar Shmuel Hachi, so when did Shmuel agree to this? Baha Tanan, didn't he teach? Amar Rabbi Yehuda, Amar Rabbi Yehuda, B'med Dora Morim, Be'er Ve'etchumen. Where do we say that if it falls down, it's the problem? So we're trying to figure out where exactly does Shmuel say that we follow Rabbi Yehuda in this case of once it's good, it's always good and that and that whole discussion, right? So we, we see Rabbi Yehuda stating that it's only by the square of square of Tzkomen that, that, if, 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 that if it's consumed, you, you, you run into issues afterwards, but, the, but by the Tzkomen, Right, it seemingly is not, as we say, that you are able to do an error for people, whether they, they know about it or they don't know about it, because you, an error for throat is beneficial for somebody. Right, so therefore, we, we apply the concept of Zachan la'adam shaloba fanav. We give benefit to a person, even if they don't know about it. But in chavan shaloba fanav, but you can't necessarily do an error for for somebody because it's not always convenient. Um, for somebody to do an error of tchumen for them, because they might have less area to walk in one direction than they plan, whereas the other direction is we would follow. Right for Erev Chatzarot again, Erev Chatzarot has never hurt anybody before. So Amar of Yehuda, Amar Shmuel, Lacha Kerb Yehuda. So then here, right, then here's where we see Shmuel say, we see Shmuel explicitly saying the halacha is like Kerb Yehuda in this case, below Ode. and not only that, he even continues stating that. Rather, every single time Rabbi Yehuda's opinion is quoted in Erevin, we follow him. Right? So that's so that that's how we know that that this is Shmuel's opinion that we follow Rabbi Yehuda in our case of what, was it good retroactively or not, that we say we don't apply that. But Amr Lay Ravchana Baghdata Le Rabbi Yehuda, and Ravchana from Baghdad said to Rabbi Yehuda, Amar Shmuel, a field of so then, right, so now we're questioning where Yehuda was reporting on Shmuel's opinion by Rav Chana of Baghdad. So he says, wait, does Shmuel, would Shmuel apply this even in the case of a mavoy, meaning an alleyway, which has you removed its cross beam or, or side post, which are meant to remind you that here's where the mavoy stops and where Rav Ram is about to begin. And he says, no, I wasn't talking about walls. I was only talking about Eruvs. So that would mean that when we say things have been consumed or fell down, that we're only saying that that's, that, that's helping us for food, but it does not help us if, if the wall falls down. So Rabbi Anand says, no, according to me, I heard it differently, that Rabbi Yehuda, he says that when is the case where we say that we're lenient, it's when it's, um, even if the wall falls down, that's when it, the breach is from, is in, is from the Rashid HaYachid or the, into a Carmelite, again, which means from a Rashid HaYachid, which is, right, Mutra to carry in, Midaraita into a Carmelite, which is also Mutra to carry in Midaraita, just Midarabona, we don't let you carry in the Carmelite because it's too similar to Rashid Tarabim. But Khan, Shinifrit Sel or Shitarbian. But here, the case where we won't let you carry is we go from the uh, private domain to the public domain, from Rashid Hayachid into Shitarbian. When there's a breach there, that's when it's really an issue. So, that, so meaning, so there are cases when we would be making. Okay? So, um, so again, before we start the next mission, just a, just a brief summary. So, we were discussing the case of in regards to the walls and whether or not that counts or not, within the opinion of Rav and Shmuel, and we said it came down to, by, by the case of the portico, we said it depends on whether or not the walls are intended for usage um, for this purpose or not, um, well, that we can count them. We also discussed the case of, we returned to the case of, again, the roof um, coming down, counting as, as a wall, P. Ticker, your Vesote. And we discussed the question of whether or not, if, if the walls have um, fallen down, if that's a problem or not. And it appears to, say, to be that the, the, the wall is more, uh, appear, does, it really does appear to be an issue. 
Um, according to uh, Rabbi Yosef's opinion, um, get for how you pass, and please consult. If, you have, if, and if this situation ever occurs, please consult your local Orthodox rep at the time because there's a lot of complicated things they can account whether or not you, you, you can necessarily say the whole thing is, is the whole area is absolutely no good according to everybody. Um, again, it would depend on where, on where the break happens and how big the break is, whether or not you can salvage it or not. So again, if, they ever, if, it ever, yeah, if you ever notice it on Shabbos that the air, the air fell down, um, uh, please tell your, your uh, local rabbi as fast as possible. Also, be, also because generally, if this ever does happen on Shabbos, we allow a non-Jew to fix it because it's Sarah Rabim. So uh, if this ever does happen, so again, yeah, so then normally what they, what, again, nowadays what happen is let's say if one of the strings fell down, you'd simply go find your, your Shabbos guy and you'd say, and, you, and, you'd, uh, and, you'd, and you'd have him fix it. Even though normally we don't let them do malach on our behalf, but when it's Sarah Rabim, such as everybody potentially violating Hotzah, Doraisa, we are Makel and let you tell the non Jew exactly what to do in order to fix the air. False. Again, for more on this, please consult your local Orthodox Rabbi if it ever occurs, but that is something that you should be aware of and that you may have that, that will need to be fixed. Okay. Yeah, d- please don't pause off of anything I say during Dr. Yomi. This is not a local mass this year, it's Dr. Yomi. So, again, all these things are subject to large machlok at Achronen. So, yeah, but again, may, if, if, any, if you notice anything weird with the Arab, um, please consult, um, please mention it to, uh, um, to, you know, to the, to the nearest rabbi at the time, because odds are there is something that can be done about it and it will be helpful. All information is, more information is always better. Okay, so Habona, now we're doing, so the next Mishnah, again, we are, uh, again, on Saturday, hey, um, about the Mishnah. So, Habona Aliyah al Gabesh Ne Batim, Chin Gisharim Hamufulashim, Matal Tlun Tachteim Bashabat, Evrei Rabbi Yehuda. Okay, let's scroll on down so we can see our nice, our, 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 our nice. Wait, where, 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 where the pictures? Um, I feel like I'm, 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 I'm we're, that, let's see, what page is it here? I guess we don't have any. Okay, I guess we guess. Okay, um, I don't have the pictures here, so I guess we'll. Um, uh, okay, so we'll, I'll, I'll stop sharing until we get to the part that uh, to find the pictures. Okay, so it's basically so if you were to have built, so we've got a house on each on each side of we have, we have two houses next to each other, and you decided you wanted to build a you know your neighbor wanted to build a joint second story, so. Or let's say if you had a nice bridge, um, right, that has a over the Rishat Ravim, right? So you, so you, you decided, again, this is assuming you got zoning permits, obviously, because, I mean, yeah. Um, so, yeah, so you decided we're going to build our, um, right, we want to have some more space. So we decided we're going to build straight over the Rishat Ravim. Um, or we're going to build a bridge, like, you know, those you've seen, you know, in some of the high rises and they have that, you know, they don't want you to ever have to like to switch between buildings have to cross the street. So I build this nice, you know, you know, that, that, the, I don't know, call it, like little passageway between the two buildings, like that bridge type of thing. So that's what we're talking about. You have one of those, right? Right. Um, in between two buildings. So the question is underneath it, what is the status underneath it? So, uh, Rabbi Yehuda says you're allowed to carry underneath, under, underneath. The Chum say you can't do that. Similarly, um, Rabbi Yehuda says you can make a an eruv on a mavoi mafulash. Meaning this when you have a straight pal, um, alleyway that goes straight on through the whole city. That again, it's not Rashi Rabim, but it's like think of it being a a side street that goes straight. I'll, I'll see if I can uh, find, find a photo for that. Um, so in cases like that, so the question is, uh, what, one second, um, a moment, I'll get, I think I have a picture for what that means. One second, sorry, just, uh, okay, um, here we go, one second. Mavoy Hamafulash, where's that city picture, city diagram? Oh, here we go. Okay. Um, uh, 
Okay. Can everybody see this guy? Yes. Okay. So again, we have our again. So we have the Rishon Rabim, right? That's the big. That's the one that's nice and clean. And then you see that there's these crisscrosses, other places that are again they are straight, but they're not um, on the side. So those are the Mavod and Fulashim. So saying for those, even though they're again the ramrod straight, but because they're not um, Rishon Harabim, um, right? So therefore, uh, they're they're Mavod and Fulashim, which again might be a type of Rishon Harabim. What um, again? That's a, that was the discussion we we had um, earlier in the Masechah as well as in Masechah Shabbos about whether or not a the the, the those parallel roads that aren't just Rabbi but run parallel to them are they considered to be public domain or not? So um, that, that was that's that discussion, All right? So again, so can you make an Arab of those straight roads? So Rabbi Yehuda says yes, because Rabbi Yehuda's opinion is if there's two walls, then that means that you can make an Arab over it. But some say no, you can't do that. Right, you need to, you know, you need to fix them with lechi and kores on each end in order to make it used for Arabic. So I'm a rabba. Lo tema hai no tamid rabbi Yehuda mishum de kasav ar shtei mechitzot oraita. So now, what I just said in terms of uh, expl explaining uh, uh, rabbi Yehuda is based on there being walls. So he's saying that don't say the rabbi Yehuda's opinion is because he thinks that if you have two walls midoraita, it no longer makes it a, uh, it makes it a shtei Right, so it's not just that there's two walls. Again, for the first case, uh, where you have a, we, where you have a bridge over Shetarabim, or when you decided to build your 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 second story over the public thoroughfare, the reason there isn't because of you having two walls on the side. Rather, it's because of the we say that the walls of the from from the bridge right on, on the edge. Right, we're, we're like those serve to come straight down, so therefore we end up having four, our four walls. So itve abaye yeter al kain amar rabbi Yehuda mish yesh no shnei batim mishnei tidei rishut harabim uselechi mikan velechi mikan ukor mikan ukor mikan v'nozde v'nozde ba'emsa. So Abaye said even more that this isn't all that Rabbi Yehuda said. Rather, he said even if you have two houses, one on each side of rishut harabim. Um, right, doesn't matter what the um, right, doesn't matter the fact that I mean, yeah, you may have seen this, been, you won't see it around in, in, in modern cities so much. But if you were, let's say, if you're um, go a little bit farther out in uh, you see it in Israel, um, some of the um, in some, in some of the like in some of the um, Arab villages where they literally have built onto the highway where people go, you know, like 100 kilometers an hour, and then like you know. About five steps, or like less, you know, like two steps away, there's somebody's house, and it's like so. You have basically you you you've been driving the highway. You've again you for each of these roads, whether that's safe or not, that's a separate question. Um, but if you happen to be on one of these roads and you feel comfortable enough being on these roads, which is you might have a, a tour guide who has happens to be armed with you. I'm not just saying, might be the case. So, um, and you're going by, you'll notice on each side of the road there's like shops. On both sides and houses the whole like you know for like, random stretches and you're like what is going on aren't i on the highway like i've been driving 90 kilometers and that's this is like people used to build like that right they used to say this is the road and therefore you built right up to the edge of the road because you wanted to be at people walking by you want to make sure you get to your shop so you build as close as you as you can to the public thoroughfare so we so in, somebody had done that so in like that type of construction so Buda says so again so if you own both houses on both sides so all again, even though that's a high, that's a highway, so all you need to do in order to actually use the area on Shabbos is you put a lechi on one side, a lechi on the other side of the highway, and or you put a koramikan, a koramikan, and or you put you know cross beam on each side of it, and now you can use that mid center area as much as you want on Shabbos, no problem. So Amrulo, aim arvin shoot to rabin makah, and then so the answer that that we got to that was. You can't make an Eruv with that, right? That's not a, a kosher way of making an Eruv. Like that's, right? That's not, says, when was that kosher? So, right? So yeah, the reason why people, why everybody's, you know, freaking out about that is because, well, um, 
here. This goes back to this. We covered this initially. So I can, I'm trying to find the, the diagram we had from it was when we were talking about gates as well. Um, here we go. Okay, so I found, found okay, so I think I found some of the pictures. Here we go, just because it, it really helps. Okay. Okay, again, yeah, that's my, 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 my goulash we had there, right? And then if we had a Rashid Harabim, right? Here's our Rashid Harabim. So the question is, what do you need to in order to fix Rashid Harabim? Right? Oh, here we go. Here's the, here, here, here's our uh, Rashid Harabim case. Great. So here, so here's our, um, okay. So again, so here's our house, here's our house on top. Here's our bridge. Um, and here's our, you know, just doing the Lechi or the Kora. Everybody sees this photo over here? Number four, number sixty. Okay, so that so that's our case. So Bermuda is like that's fine. Just look at your core there, and you can carry there. And everybody else is like, you know, busy, you know, screaming at him angrily, like, how are you doing that? That's just we don't do that, all right? So this again, this, this came up all, also in the very very beginning of the sahat. So Amrle miahid mihal lekish mishmoshvamina. So the Rebbe said, based on that discussion that we saw quoted, that um right is that we don't that that the review is being based on are having two walls being sufficient to be a Rashid Yachid. We clearly don't the don't agree to in the end, and therefore if the, the, our case must be different. So Miha Lake Mishmamina. Therefore, for our case, we, we can't be learned, we we can't right that, so our mission is not relying on the two walls midaraita. That's why Rabba had said this. Right, it can't be the two walls are up to make a If so, we wouldn't be passing like a Yehuda because we know that we don't pass in like a Yehuda for that, that for there being for the two walls being enough. So Amar of Amar of Ashi Matnita Nami Dik Daika. You can also infer from the Mishnah itself. Midik Tani if owed Amar of Yehuda. I'm a Arvim and Mavoy Mafulash. I'm a Masrim because it's because Rabbi Yehuda says you can make an Eru for Mavoy Mafulash. The Chavim says that you can't. So, I understand if the discussion is about Pitikur Yor Visotem, do we say that we draw the wall from the edge of the overhang or the bridge, right? Or from the Korah, right? Do we say, can we draw a wall straight down? So, then I understand why those, why, why we're saying furthermore. But on the other hand, it wouldn't be the ode because we're going from the transition of the case is one as follows. We had a, we, we, okay, we have a Shud Rabim, you built a house over it. Right, you built um, like a bridge or second story over the Shud Rabim. Then the next case says, how about the, the Mavot Mufol Hashim, right? And it says the ode, furthermore. So if we're going from a case of it being, you know, Rashid Harabim to Mavoy Hamafulash, so it is in. Right, so that it doesn't. See, in order for it to be another step beyond that, it, we must be referring to there being something related to it, and there being in, in similar levels. So that would mean that you have to be talking about the the issue being discussed can't be about the walls, because then there's there's th then the, the second case is worse than the first case, right? Because in the first case, um. I mean, sorry, I mean it would be the reverse, but um, right. So again, we, so you want to say that. That you wanted to say that even more so, just like here again, we have a full um, house on top, and we're saying that it, that it applies. So even more in the other case, it applies. So that would only work if we're talking about the particular. If we're talking about the walls, so the, we haven't changed our use of the actual side walls in both cases, right? Both cases there are walls on both sides. There will be no difference. So this is saying that no, it's, it's it's that it's an even more so case. So that's why that would be that would, that would be our situation. Okay, Hadron Allah Kol Hagago. So now we have finished talking about our roofs and our standard um, Abram discussion. Now we're going to be talking about, about what we're allowed to carry, when, where, and why. Um, hopefully we'll have time to finish it. I apologize if I have to go a little bit faster for this part. Um, that's mostly my fault for, um, um, sorry, 200, uh, still not there yet. Get dizzy from the rapidly shifting pages, please. Um, here we are. Okay, now we're at the tenth para. Okay, so um, so okay, so we, we finished Kolagago again. So in, in Kolagago, we discussed um, a lot about roofs and 
and, and second stories and about how they how all the various issues get connected. Um, last we talked about once again, it seems we connected all the way back to the, to the, to the first parak in regards to the um, um, status of Rishit Rabbi. Um, now we're going into the question of what are we allowed to start carrying out um, similar to what we had a similar discussion in Shabbos. So, Hamotzi Tfilin Machnisan Zug Zug. So, if somebody is uh, fi, um, has fi, 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 in. so you, the way you, you bring it in is like again, you don't want to leave it outside because you don't want them to get ruined. They're they're very valuable, so you, you put them on one at a time and you wear them, and then and then and then um, wear the way you normally wear tefillin. Then you carry them in, then you take them off and do it again for whatever uh, um, you, for how many pairs of tefillin you found outside. Bring them Leo, Omer, Shnaim, Shnaim. Bring them less, you can wear two at a time. The med verma morim be a shanot. Avabachado, Shadashot, Pator. So we say, um, so when are you allowed to do this in terms of putting them on to carry them inside, even though you're technically, you know, moving from Rishat to Rabbi to Rishat to So we allow this if they're already been used, as opposed to Chadashot, right? You're not sure if these are necessarily. Um, kosher or proper um, tefillin, or just you know, somebody decided to make a uh, kameh in the shape of a, of a tefillin, so therefore you wouldn't be able, you, you you wouldn't be able to carry them in. So mitzan tzvatim akrichot. If you found the tefillin and they were wrapped in bundles or wrapped in piles, I, okay. So so here, so we'll get to that. Here, so that's here, so that's that's down here. Okay, so you found them in, like you know wrapped up in, a, in an interesting fashion. So machshich alein mevian. You wait until so again. So if they're already wrapped together or tied, and therefore you can't end up you know wearing them properly to bring it to bring, then you basically should stand by them until the end of Shabbos and then bring them with you. It was a kana machasan v'holet. But if it's a dangerous area. Um, right, or if it's a dangerous time where you know shot a shema and they might kill you, so then you simply cover them and then you go on your way, and then you know you can come back for them later if you want. But then you shouldn't danger yourself standing next to them if they're gonna if you're gonna get killed over the film. Rishimon Omer, no to the chavero, the chaver the chavero, ach megiel the chaserach itona. So Rishimon has a different way of, of fixing this issue of, of again where you can't care where you can't wear them. So he, or if you could wear them, he's not a fan of that. So he says basically, so you, if you have a friend with you, so each of you, every four amo, you switch off, you, less than four amo, you guys trade off. So, you know, you do like, you know, bucket brigade style, um, right? Pass to your friend, and you, then you run around and you grab it. Um, and that way you never end up uh, violating. Uh, but no, similarly, if you had, if you just, if your wife had just given birth in the field and you can't, basically now the problem is that now your child ends up being Ends up being muksa. Sorry, it's a big. Sorry, not muksa. Your, your child is unable to be carried because we normally would say chay no a living being carries themselves, but that only applies if they are able to move. A newborn child can't. So in order to bring the child indoors, let's say, again, this is like the you know the the horror case where you accidentally gave birth, you know, on your way on your way to the uh, to the hospital, or or in ancient times, you know, on the way to the um, local uh, midwife's house, and they're on the side of the road, and you're like, "Oh, now what? Like, you're not going to leave your baby in bed and then there." So, just, how do you do it? So, you, so this is the way you, the way, luck way you solve it. Okay, um, a few of man. You can do that as far as you want. There's no limit of how far you can do it, right? You should, you should keep doing it. It takes 100 people. You should make sure that you can get this baby inside and not leave them outside, because that would be really bad. Okay, Rabbi Yehuda Omer, noted Adam Chavit Lachavera, Lachavera Lachavera, Afilu Chosutzchol. Rabbi Huda says, similarly, you could do the same thing for a barrel, and you can do this um, as far as you want, even if you're not violating chub. Amrulo, lo t'halach yoter, zo yoter b'yiragli ba'alea. So the Chavon said back to him, no, you can't, go as, you can't go as far as you want. You're limited by the distance. So zuga chadin t'velo. So again, you're allowed to wear one pair, but you can't wear two. Lema t'nan stam adlo k'rabi meir. So that would imply that the that the average that the Stam Mishnah is like Rumer, because here we have Rumer's opinion coming next. So that means the Stam Mishnah is not like Rumer. Um, so the Eker Rumer, this, and if you want to say that so this is a Rumer, because we're going to quote um, the, the Mishnah Shabbos, 
We know that the opinion of Rabbi Meir is you can wear as much as you can on Shabbos. You know, the, the jokes you see when you go to the, going to the airport and you can't afford luggage. So, you, you know, you dress like a, uh, you know, like the guy who can't move and like waddles over wearing, you know, 15 pairs of pants and shirts and, you know, and, and, and socks and hats and like, right. So like, yeah, you can do that. Uh, so right so and one so this is the case where your your house is on fire um right the person's house is on, is on fire um or again this is assuming that there's no actual danger of spreading and of being actually dangerous this is you know let's say you know you, you live in a place where like everybody's got their own stone house sufficiently distance away that all that's gonna happen is you'll burn burn out your five you know like pieces of furniture in your house and then you'll be fine then the house will be fine nothing dangerous not gonna collapse nothing bad can happen um that it could be dangerous in any way so then he says what you do is you again you can move the utensils out into the, into, into the courtyard and then you can you know wear all wear or get wear all the clothing that are wearable and all the ones that are wrappable you know, like all types of like you know the utilization you wrap them all on you at once then you go out and that's how you save everything so Vahai Stama, my me mind Rabbi Meir. So if you're talking about this unattributed Mishnah, how do we do this is referred to Rabbi Meir? Tiktani Allah Lovesh Motsiya Poshe, because it says you wear, you leave, and then you take it off. For Lovesh Motsiya Poshe, a few call him Kulo, the Rabbi Meir. Okay, because Rabbi Meir says you can do what you can wear and take off as much as you want the whole day long, and you've never violated Shabbos yet. Still Mutter. So Amarava, a few tam Rabbi Meir, Hatam Derek Mabu Show. Uh, so, right, so the answer is, is that this is, assuming when you're wearing it, it's the, all right, so you basically would wear it the way that you would wear it during the week. Yeah, normally, we not, don't necessarily end up wearing our, um, so, so, um, right, so again, so even though, again, even though we normally don't work to fill out on Shabbos, so therefore we don't use it as a, as a day. Again, but we say that we treat it like it's during the week now, and you people wear it still as cloth as clothing. Therefore, now we for this purpose we'll let you treat it as, as clothing. And the case we talked about by the fire, right? So there you're allowed to wear whatever you want, just like during the week. And so therefore, right? So therefore, right by what you wear on Shabbos, we say just like you wear during the week. Too, and therefore we're trying to save things from the fire. Um, that's so it's the, it's the same concept. You know, we're talking about saving the item from the fire. We're not talking about any, but anything. There's no number involved here. Um, nowadays, if there is a fire, please call the fire department as fast as possible because that is an emergency, and we don't want anybody uh, uh, getting injured. And everybody has everybody, everybody literally has gas lines. A lot of people gas lines going into their houses, so that could lead to a whole lot more than just your house that could lead to a long up the entire block. Anyways, um, okay. So just like the way you normally would wear clothes during the week is you, uh, you're told you'd only wear one pair. So two Shabbos, you'd also wear only one pair. Um, that's the, and, the, and that's, and, and that's the comparison. Okay. So again, clearly, they, clearly this is under the assumption that you don't wear two pairs of children at once. Um, all right. That's the first thing in the Mishnah. Second thing Mishnah seems to say that wearing two pairs of children is something that people do. Can do and do. So now we're talking uh, about how can you wear two pairs of tefillin. So what's this? What's his opinion? If you say that you can wear um, Shabbos, you're supposed to wear tefillin on Shabbos, then that's the place for one pair. Why are you wearing two? So and if you're saying that it's not because you're trying to fill the mitzvah of, 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 of tefillin, then why? Then again, you're trying to like wear it out, then to, like, to, wear, to wear the tefillin to carry them out of the out of the building. Then you could wear as many tefillin as fit on your head. Who cares about the number one or two? Well, I'm Shabbat laws milan tefillin. No, he holds you don't wear tefillin on Shabbos. So rather, what the that that you're right. So you don't have to wear tefillin on Shabbos. Because so we're trying to give an example of a way you would wear it in order in order to carry it out on Shabbos. in. So again, that would allow you to wear only one pair of tefillin because people will only wear one pair. No, the answer is that you, if you have room for two, you can wear two. Just not only most people's heads only happen to fit one. I understand if you fit two on your head, right? You put the one in front, one in front, two side by side, so I mean, they're small enough. 
But how do you do about your shaliyad? Karvuna dam or Yehuda, pamim shadam ba minasadam v'chavilato al rosho. I'm so calm. Mir rosho v'kasharon bezro. The answer is that sometimes, if you let's say if you're carrying things on your head, like yeah, people you used to do back in ancient times, and you still see it in some parts of the world nowadays, they used to carry heavy things on their head, and because because it's, it's simply easier. Um, so therefore, they would move their tefillin shel rosh to their to their to, the, to their to their arms. So therefore, there is a way to carry to wear two on your um, on your on, on your arm. Amar 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 of Yehuda Shalin Hag Bazed Derek Bazed Yon. So and the Rufuna is saying this because you don't want uh, you move it to the side because it's degrading to be to have to be wearing something else on your head while you're wearing tefillin. Um, hence why people don't why the make of the minhag of not wearing their if you wear half ring davening you should not be wearing it while you're wearing tefillin. Um, it's based on that. Also, the question of whether you're allowed to put your talus over your tefillin. Um, okay. So ra so roi miamar. So again, so is in so but in the fact that you that you're only doing so because you're trying to avoid disrespecting the tefillin. But in general, would you want to do that? Ella could amar roshmuel bar yitzchak makom sheish barosh barosh sharoi laniach bar shnei tefillin. Has to be a case where you had enough space to put two tefillin on your head. Achanami makom sheish biyad sharoi laniach bar shnei tefillin. So here also you have to have room for two. Um, so how do you end up having room for two? So you end up having room for two if you have, if you ever, um, is based on if you have a big fill or small fill and you can have, they're, they're, if you've probably seen this very small fill in, those are totally made out of the hide of animals that are smaller animals called duck goat, meaning cow, um, sheep or goats, as opposed to ones that we that most people are nowadays are made out of cows, hide, which are much bigger and sturdier. So there you would not be able to fit two. Uh, it depends on, on, again, on the size of your fill. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, we'll go back, back going pretty fast. Okay, so uh, Tana de, uh, to try to finish before the time. Uh, so Tana Devei Menasha Al Yadcha Azoki Bore Benenecha Zokad Kod. Okay, so we learned from the house of Menasha, school of Menasha, that Al Yadcha is again now look at stuff for the diagram. Where do you put? Where you, putting your tilan on? So again, so again, the keyboard is over here. Uh, uh, is over here. Um, okay, and Kod Kod is over there in the head. For more on that, so I, should, I recommend looking at diagrams online. If you want to, to know where exactly that is, that is, don't have time to explain where you've been filling now, right now. Okay. Hecha Amar Amar Debe Rabiyane Mokomo Shemocho Shel Tzedek Profet. This is the place where the where the crown of, where the crown of the head, where the where the back of the head, where the babies have fuses. Um, forgetting that there is a name for that. I'm forgetting what it is. I apologize. Leimah Ben Rav Shmuel Bar Yisla Kamiflagi the Tana Kama Late. Late, 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 so we're saying that this is the question of, of, of how big this, the, the size is um, for where you're allowed to put your uh, till in, right? And then they ask, no, lo, the hule ama eat lu the rav shmuel bar which is the larger share where you put your till in. Uh, now, rather, right everybody agrees that there's no space. The question is, are you allowed to work till on Shabbos or not? Are you supposed to bring till on Shabbos or not? The first thing said, Tulane Shaman Shabbos, therefore, that's why you wear one like you normally would. And, and according to Rabbi um, Gamliel, Shabbos is not considered to be time for Tulane. We're out of time. Um, okay, so we will continue tomorrow um, from Ebay Aim about talking about the time, um, about uh, what the time is for Tulane. Um, and again, just to sum up, so we discussed, we're talking about the case of carrying things out in Church of Tarabim. We talked discussing the, discussing um, about wearing things the way you normally would wear them and how it relates to being Zman, uh, about, about whether you can start by talking about whether you can or not. And also the question of whether it's going to be considered how it's worn and when it's worn in clothing. Um, and, er, and earlier we were discussing the case of Rishat Tarabim, whether or not, when, when, when you start putting things over Rishat when does that count as a valid, um, a valid removal from Shas Rabim, and when it does not. Okay, uh, sorry if it was a little bit quick. If anyone has any questions, I'm happy to stay on and answer them because I know people are busy. I don't want to take up too much time. Try. Thank you, Rabbi. Okay. Have a good day. Have a good day, everybody. Take care. Have a good day.